In this video, we'll talk about some CAD commands that are commonly used to draw geometry and edit it. Some common geometry commands might be draw a line, rectangle, circle, or arc, while some common edit commands might be undo, redo, delete, trim, move, copy, and offset. These edit and geometry functions can be found on AlphaCam's toolbars and tabs. From the Geometry tab, we can choose to draw a line, a rectangle, a circle, or an arc. You'll find edit commands under the Edit tab, such as Delete, Undo, Trim, Move, copy, offset. You can also find these common geometry and edit commands on the Park Industries toolbar below. The quickest way to enable a command is to type in the letter or alias on the keyboard. For instance, if we hover the rectangle icon, that will see in parentheses the letter R. If I simply type R on the keyboard, it will enable the rectangle command. Some of the commands have multiple options within them. Notice that some of the commands, including the circle, have a small black arrow beneath the name. If you click on the arrow, it will show all the options within the circle command. The Geometry tab displays drawing commands. We'll go through drawing the shape displayed using two geometry commands, the rectangle and the circle. It might be the easiest to visualize this part thinking about it drawn on graph paper or displayed on a grid. We'll focus on the inner part of this drawing to start with. If we would connect all the flats, we could see that we need to draw a rectangle. To draw the rectangle, we would need the start point and its dimensions. We could visualize the four arcs as four circles to start with. In order to draw the four circles that we need, we'll need to know the diameter and or radius along with the center point which we already know. We can imagine that this part is going to be 6 inches off the left and front edge of our table. So we'll choose the rectangle command to start drawing the rectangle. And after choosing the command, we'll follow the instructions at the bottom of the screen, where it shows us we've chosen to draw a rectangle and it asks us to pick the first corner. Remember that all references come from the X0 location on the screen and the Y0 location on the screen. So we want to start 6 over in the X, so we'll type in 6 into the X field, and we want to start up 6 in the Y direction. So we'll type 6 into the Y field. You can press Enter after each. If you move your mouse on the screen, you can see that one corner of the rectangle has attached itself to that coordinate or location. Now to complete the second part of the command, at the bottom of the screen, it's asking us to specify the second point, which is the top right corner of the rectangle. The first corner is at x6 and we want to go an additional 20 over. To do so, I'll press the right arrow key on my keyboard, which sets the cursor to the right of my number 6. Now I can press the plus key to add the 20 inches, which is the length of my rectangle, to the starting point of x6. Then press the enter key. Then I'll do the same for Y. I'll press the right arrow key so I can add 10, the height of my rectangle, to the Y6 and press the Enter key. 
specifying the work coordinates of the two opposite corners completes the rectangle. Now that we're finished drawing rectangles, we will finish the rectangle command by right-clicking on the screen or pressing the escape key on our keyboard. So we have an open command line. Now we can draw our circles. Note that two of the circles are defined with a radius of 5 and the other two are defined with a diameter of 5. In the center of each circle sits on the corner of the rectangle. I'll start by choosing the center plus radius type of circle to draw from my flyout menu. And then we'll follow the command line to guide us through the completion of the circle. I'll type 5 and enter for the radius of the circle. And now it asks us to specify the x and y coordinate for the center of the circle. Since we want the center of the circle to be on the bottom left corner of the rectangle, the x would be 6 over and the y would be 6 up. Therefore, we'll type in x value of 6 and enter, and then the y value of 6 and enter. That completes the first circle, and now the second circle with the radius is still 5 so I'll press enter to accept it. We can type in the coordinates for the center of the circle. x6 plus 20 would be 26. y6 plus 10 would be 16. Therefore the coordinate would be x26, y16. Since we want the center of the circle to go to the end of that line, we can use a snap. In this case, we'll choose end point or the F6 key because we want to go to the end of an existing line. Now we can select a line by placing our arrow on the outline of it. Notice the little white circle lights up when I get past the midpoint to one end or the other. We want to select the correct line and then get past the midpoint to the correct end and then left click on the line. This will lock the center of the circle on the exact end point of that line. The other two circles asked for a center point and diameter so we'll select that type of circle from the options. We'll enter the diameter as 5. The coordinates for the bottom right corner of the rectangle would be x26 and y6. I'll just enter in the coordinates for this one and use snaps on the next one. I'll enter or click OK to accept the 5 inch diameter circle and then I'll choose the end of this top left corner. And then we'll either right click with the mouse or press the escape key to finish the circle command. Now that we have geometry on the screen, we can use some of the zoom and pan commands. Roll the wheel back and forth to zoom in and out. First, Place your arrow in the desired area to zoom in on. Zooming in and out is dependent on where the arrow is placed. We can also pan by pressing and holding the scroll wheel straight down. While we're holding it, we can move the mouse back and forth to move the geometry within our window. By pressing and holding our wheel down and or rolling it in and out, we can navigate through our drawing area. If we need our drawing to be centered on our screen, we can use the keyboard. If we press the letter Z on our keyboard, which stands for zoom, the drawing will be centered and fill our drawing area. 
pressing the letter V, which stands for view, can toggle us between an isometric or a top view. Next we'll talk about how to use a few of the edit commands. The edit commands can be found on the edit tab in Alphacam's toolbar. You can learn the keyboard shortcuts while hovering each icon and reading the letter in parentheses. We'll use the delete command to learn about selection sets. When we choose a modify command, such as delete, it says select. The first method of selecting is to pick an object by placing the arrow on the edge of the geometry and left clicking. You can pick as many objects as you want to select for that command. Your selections will be completed when you choose Finish. And we'll click OK to complete deleting the four circles. Now we'll undo our delete so we get our four circles back so we can try selecting with a different method. We'll choose Delete, and when it says Select Objects at the bottom of the screen, this time we'll use a window. The window is created by clicking to the left of the geometry and pulling to the right. I can create two windows to select all four circles before I finish to complete the Delete command. We'll undo and choose Delete again so we can choose a different selection method. This time, we'll click to the right of our geometry and pull to the left to create a crossing window, which is displayed as a dashed line. Anything the dashed line touches will be selected. And always finish when you're finished selecting objects. Another option in selecting is to deselect. I can select all geometry in my drawing by clicking on the All button to select all the geometry in my drawing. But before I finish, I will pick to deselect the rectangle. So only my circles will be deleted. Since I only want to remove a portion of my circles, I'll undo the delete so that I can trim instead. When choosing Trim, note that the first thing it asks for is to select Cutting Geometries. A cutting geometry is a geometry used to divide a different geometry. In this example, we only want to keep the inner portions of the circle. Therefore, we'll use the rectangle as the cutting geometry to remove the outer portions. Remember to finish after selecting the cutting geometry. And the command line changes to pick what you'd like to trim away. As we pick the outer portions of the circle, they are trimmed against the cutting edge that we've selected. When you're finished selecting all items to be trimmed away, Finish the Trim command by right-clicking or pressing the Escape key on your keyboard. Now we'll choose Trim again, this time selecting different cutting geometries. If we're going to trim the corners of the rectangle away, we'll choose the arcs as the cutting geometries. Then choose Finish when you're finished. And then we see the message to select the objects that we want to trim away. It's not unusual to experience an object getting divided and you'll have to select both portions of it. And then finish to complete the trim command. And now we can create a border two inches to the outside with two inch radiuses using offset and fillet. 
When we choose Offset, it will bring up a little window. The distance that we'll set is the distance between the original inside geometry to the new outside border that we're going to create. As we said earlier, 2 inches. Next we'll select Line as the object to offset. And by checking the box Offset as Geometry, the lines will come out on the same familiar green layer. Click OK and then follow the prompts at the bottom of the screen. Select the line and then select the direction either towards the top or as we want to the outside. Click and the line will be offset two inches in that direction. Repeat this process for all four sides. Select the line and then pick the direction to offset to. Right click or escape to finish the offset command. And finally, we'll use fillet to connect the lines and apply radiuses to the corners. I'll set two inches as a radius, click OK, and then, as always, follow the prompts on the command line. Select the first line and then select the second line, picking closest to the end of the line to connect it to another. Now that our drawing is complete, we can save it. You must have an empty or open command line before you can choose Save, which is found on the File tab. Then choose Save or Save As and browse to a location where you'd like to save it. Choose a file name and press OK. Thank you for choosing Park Industries. Thanks.